Oh, hi. You came back. You came back for another week of how to do something featuring me and my never-ending project. We're all part of a never-ending story. Never story. We are? Story. Even if we die? Yes, Bastion. Anyways, so as you guys seen in the thumbnail today, I'm gonna probably play with this thing. Good old Victor X. Now, I was wanted one of these intake manifolds back my old car and uh when i was building it and you know my friends all had victor x manifolds and it was like like if you had one you were cool you were somebody like you were going fast so then i decided well i'm gonna run one on this build and then i bought one and all my friends are running skunk 2 ultra manifolds and that just makes me sad inside <laughs> Anyway, I'm still gonna run the Victor X because, well, I never got to run one on my last car, so I wanna run one now. So, screw it, plus I already bought the damn thing, I might as well use it, and we can always upgrade later on down the road. But, problem is, is that along with that, we are going to be running 70 millimeter alpha throw body, well, the problem is, is that it doesn't quite fit. I mean, it does fit, but it doesn't fit. All right, so now I've got throttle body on here. Temporarily, only two bolts, no gasket, whatever. It's coming back off. Basically, we open this thing up, you can see how there's that ridge there. It's not quite perfect, I guess I would say. It's not flush with the throttle body. It's the throttle body bigger than the intake manifold. So we need to port match it. Obviously, you probably already know that if you're watching this video, but for those of you that don't know that, because I know there's a few of you that don't know what I'm talking about, basically we need the intake manifold opening to be the exact same size as the throttle body because you don't want any restriction when the air is going in. Restriction equals less horsepower. So, we need to port match that. Basically, we need to widen the hole, open the hole, make it even with the throttle body. And in order to do that, we are going to run a fancy little flap wheel, flapper wheel, standard thing, whatever you want to call it. I don't... It's, it goes around and it does the thing. And it takes things like it sands and spins and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I got the idea from Debbie Garage on YouTube. So if you guys don't watch Debbie Garage, go hit him up. Go watch his channel. His channel's cool too. And uh, it's actually a really good idea. Basically, he took lap wheel and then got it inside the intake manifold and then just turned his drill on and sanded it down. Um, but before I do that, I got to find myself a black Sharpie. I'm going to pull this thing back off and we're going to draw a... Uh, we're gonna drop, put black paint. I'm just gonna do it and I'll show you. All right, so here you guys can see, basically I took this black Sharpie and I'm just coloring around the circle here, around the hole in the uh, intake manifold. So basically now what we'll do is we'll take our throttle body, put our throttle body back on here. And then um, I'm gonna find something to I'm gonna open up the throttle body. I'm gonna find something to go around and scribe this black marker so then we know how much we have to take off. So, pretty simple. Um, only the, the tough part is when you find something to scrap a line with. Actually, I think I just did. This pin should work. Hope they don't drop it. 
because you might not be able to hear it. Anyways, of stupid jokes, how? Get the throttle body put on, scribe my line, and uh, we'll see how much we have to take off. All right, so I got that line scribed, and uh, I guess you can kind of, yeah, you can see it there. A nice little silver line in the black. Well, that's that's how much we need to open it up. So, got the old flapper wheel here. And basically, what we're gonna do is just turn, twist this until it fits in there, and then send it. So, uh, yeah. Three hours later. All right, so got it all widened out. Put the throttle body back on and make sure that we're good. Um, I ended up using, well, I used the flap wheel, like I said, but I also ended up having to use the deep bit because um, the flap wheel is like 120 grit and uh, it was going really, really slow. So I figured, well, I might as well just use the deburbit to really grind down a little bit faster and then f do a finish, you know, finish with that 120 grit. If I would have like an 80 or 60 grit flap wheel, it probably would have worked just fine. But I only had 120 grit, so it worked out though. It put a nice, nice shiny finish on the inside of here. So it's just a matter of, uh, let's throw that back on here real quick. And um, well, we'll see if it uh, we'll see if it's port matched. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Did we get it? Seems to be flush there. No, well, pretty flush up top, except for that one little spot where that. Whatever it is. I think, I don't know if that's because of, well, up top there, on the side a little bit. Looks like I got a little tiny touching up to do in two spots here. But other than that, she's basically port matched, which is pretty sweet. It actually took forever. I didn't think it was going to take that long, but like I said, you know, 120 grit and whatnot. And then, yeah, I don't know. It's drill batteries went dead, ended up having to turn the compressor on and use a die grinder. And it was whatever. It's basically done. Probably touch up those two little parts and then uh, call it good. Um, before I put this intake manifold on the car though uh i am gonna take it i think to work and i'm gonna run it through our big like jet pot parts washer just to make sure i get everything out of that thing 100 percent clean i don't have to worry about it um and then i can finally assemble this thing by putting the thermal gasket in here that i got from speed factory and speaking of speed factory i also need to put on my TPS sensor and my four bar max sensor onto the throttle body so that that's done. And then we can put all of our little fittings and crap on the intake manifold and finally get it bolted on here with a thermal gasket as well. Um, yeah, so that's basically port matching. Very much to it. Um, I'm going to be a short video because. I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna record me sitting there sanding a hole the whole time. I, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. Um, the only other thing that I really got going on right now with the car is the valve cover. So, I got this valve cover here and I blasted it, except for that little chunk of paint there. Because that's because I had the cap on, but. It's been blasted, it's ready to be, I'm gonna have this thing powder coated, but the 
reason that I got it all cleaned up and whatnot was got these bungs welded on the uh, top side of the valve cover. Um, so I ended up drilling these all with I think it was a quarter inch. Uh, hole saw bit, I believe. I can't remember. I just held it up to the bung, made sure it was basically the same size. Um, but yeah, so I had them weld, weld the fittings in there. You can't really see the welds because they're buried. Then I also had them put this baffle. I'm all over the place, guys. I apologize. There we go. Now you can see it. So this baffles over the bungs. So basically that the valve train doesn't sling oil down the down the AN lines to the catch can. Um, so I got this baffle on here to protect that and uh, so the, then the guys that welded it for me um, they ended up cutting out the stock baffle and uh, kind of glad they did um, in a way because like like running my fingers down in here like you can feel the fucking sand from uh from the sandblast cabinet and really like they made a good point the stock baffling is really only there for your stock fitting which is now gone and the holes welded shut so you yanked that thing out welded this shut and uh they just took that out so i think what i'm gonna do here in the f coming days, maybe tomorrow or something, I gotta go get some more, some more uh, of those round sanding discs for the Dremel. But I'm just gonna go over, and I think I'm gonna just sand each one of these flat, or just you know at least clean them up because they're like all jagged and shit from when they cut them. I would just like to clean it up a little bit, get all of this old Honda Bond out of here since the stock baffle's not going back in. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, this thing will be ready to be dropped off next week for powder coating, which will be sweet. Now, I don't, I don't really know what color I want to do yet. I'm thinking blue, maybe, because it's like the cage is blue, the suspension's blue, rear suspension's blue. I mean, so many blue things on this thing. And the cage is that cobalt, cobalt blue metallic, so I was thinking, well, maybe i just do that. Um, so put it in the comments. What color do you guys think I should do this thing? Factory black, blue, pink, I don't know. So put it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, but really, that's all I got today, guys. It wasn't a banger video by any means, but it's content. It's something. This is what I got going on. It's not really anything fun. Still trying to save up money to get the rest of the parts so we can get this motor in the car. Um, but get this valve cover done and then we can uh adjust the valves and get this thing on there and really get this motor buttoned up so thanks for watching please like it if you haven't subscribed subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video peace